Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Film Snobbery Live. I am your host, uh, Nick Baisley, and I'm here joined by tonight, uh, joined with me tonight by my co-host, uh, <laughs> the Aquaman of indie film, uh, Jerry Cavallaro. Jerry, Thanks, say hi. Uh, Nick, hi. You're welcome, sir. Um, well, no, because it's funny because you just got demoted apparently on Twitter from Aquaman to Aqualad. Yeah, that. Thank you, uh, Rintenchi. <laughs> Yeah, Aqualad, and then apparently next I'm going to be the the random red shirt of indie film. Nice, nice. Um, I want to thank everyone out there. Uh, we've had a crazy couple of weeks. We haven't. This is our first time back in a couple of weeks, and we want to just uh, say thank you uh, very specifically because while we were gone at the various festivals and stuff, we uh, we actually had an Indiegogo campaign that was running at the same time. And uh, what we we're uh, doing with that is we're trying to raise some money for some new equipment and some travel costs and stuff like that. And uh, we did actually end up meeting our goal. Uh, we had a two thousand dollar goal, and we ended up raising two thousand two hundred and twenty two dollars. And and uh, now we, uh, we've decided to call those people who helped us out uh, the Film Snobbery Saviors, and we've decided to start thanking you. We have our, our perks and everything from Indiegogo that we'll be giving out soon, but to start thanking you guys, we wanted to just do a little, you'll see it above me here, it's a little scroll that'll go through the whole show uh, with your names of all the people who uh, donated to the, to the show and, and donated to our, our, our cause and our campaign. So I want to just sincerely uh, say thank you. And um, and uh, in in also as part of thanking you, I'm bringing you a great show tonight. That's what we got. We have a gentleman on the show tonight that I'm so happy to finally connect with after watching his work for the better part of a decade. Uh, you guys know him. Uh, probably started out as the uh, one of the <laughs> one of the hosts on the screensavers back in. Uh, G, uh, let's see, uh, it was G4 Tech TV back in the day, and then uh, also the co-host of Totally Rad Show, the co-host of Dignation, and the creator of Project Lore. Uh, you can see his new short, Voltron The End, starring Sykes, Timothy Oldmanson. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got him right here, Alex Albrecht. Hello, sir. <laughs> well, hello. Hello, look at that string of credits right there. I know, that was amazing. I was like, I think he's got, he's got to stop talking at some point. No, <laughs> Most I, of those credits are like eight years old. <laughs> I'm just happy I'm just happy that I didn't have to like refer to IMDb for any of that. Um, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> now, I want to say, as part of, now, I, I geeked out a little bit uh, and gushed over uh, Alex coming on the show a little bit off air, and I was really excited to have him on. But the one thing I didn't mention was uh, I actually have with me here, because I figured he can't see it, uh, but you guys at home can, uh, I've got some swag for that I've bought over the years to help support, <laughs> to help support Mr. <laughs> Alex Albrecht and, and, and his various uh, shows. Uh, here's my Dignation t-shirt. Right oh here, I'm God. holding that one up, and here's another one that I didn't mention, but I and I was so pissed that this never got picked up for longer. But I completely understand my Control Alt Chicken T-shirt. Oh no, I love it. And I would have, <laughs> and I would have totally had my. I would have been rocking my TRS hoodie, my Totally Rad Show hoodie, but I can't find it. It's gone. Oh. Someone snagged it because it's that popular. Um, we actually have new hoodies coming out finally after like seven years. Oh, nice. Now, is, is, who's the company that's making them? Do you know? Uh, we go through Jinx, yeah. Gotta Jinx. love Jinx. Oh. Yeah, they've been supporting us. I mean, we, they've actually been supporting us since the Screensavers days. I mean, I met the guys from Jinx through Kevin back on Screensavers, and it was just these, you know, guys. And they've blown up, man. I mean, I'm so happy for them. I mean, they once they started getting in bed with Blizzard, so now they do all the licensed World of Warcraft stuff goes mm -hmm. through them. And they have always, no matter how big they've gotten, they've always supported anything. I mean, you know, even if I wanted to do a, a Vulture on the End shirt, they would be like, dude, where do we sign? Let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, I love you know, companies I, like that that are just like, yeah. you know, once once they love you, they love you. And it's just like, no, we'll sell it. You know, we'll make yeah, it, we'll sell it. Super cool. They're super cool. And then their, their products have always, I own, obviously, I own a lot of their products because I bought them through you guys over the years. And uh, we are actually had an affiliate link with uh, Jinx for the longest time. Um, just great geek wear. I love their stuff. Yeah. Um, and they really support a lot of people. I mean, they're, they're very much very open and, and they go to all these events. I mean, like you always see them. And the crazy thing is, you know, Sean, one of the one of the founders, is a buddy of mine, and he's the guy manning the desk at BlizzCon. You know what I mean? Like he's selling shirts at BlizzCon, so it's like that company where 
even the high ups are on the floors of the different conventions and selling their swag. I mean, they're they're just great guys. I love that, man. I love it. The people who care about the company and the the and connecting with their audience, and that's yeah. that's also something that you guys have been able to really do well for Dignation and Totally Rad Shows Delay. You guys are at conventions um, right now. You guys just are selling tickets for the last Dignation show in L.A. Yeah. Uh, the lot live Dignation show, and that's something like when you guys started doing that. I remember like you guys did like one one of their first ones. You guys did was back in like a ski lodge somewhere and you had like a small crowd there and then and then you know and then before I knew it I'm looking at you guys at I think it might have been BlizzCon or Comic-Con or some 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 you know uh, con of some sort and yeah. you guys were packing halls yeah we did we did that show it was really crazy because we started I remember that it was um it was in San Francisco this place called the cap like the chalet or something like that I don't even remember uh, but it, we literally driving up to that first live show, we'd only been on for about a year, maybe less, and Kevin was so nervous. He was like, he literally turned to me and said, I just hope one person shows up. Yeah. Like, I, he was like, I just want one per. I don't want to go into a restaurant that we're doing a live show at, and nobody there knows why we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully, we, we shut up, and there was a, a fairly good amount of people there. It was a really cool vibe, and it, and it kind of lit our... Our engines of going like, wow, we're we're communicating to a, to a crowd of people that are like-minded people, and that was what we always loved about our show. Is we were like, look, we we just want to make a show that we would like to watch, and that is about the things that we are interested in, you know, and and uh, and then to move up to some of the shows that we've done overseas and and you know, South by Southwest selling, you know, I mean, there was like 3,500 people showed up to our South by Southwest show, and we crowd surfed. So that was like. That's what's happening. You, you, you got you hit rocks. Once you can crowd surf your crowd, you've hit rock star status. Yeah, and, it's kind of crazy. And the cool thing is, I mean, you guys, you've been able to um, replicate that on, on on different shows that you've been in. I remember, you know, even when you guys did Totally Rad show, it, you, I mean, there was one point you guys were doing, you were bungee jumping, yeah. and. Uh, uh, I can't remember if that was a Dan Becomes a Man skit or not, but yeah, um, it would have been had Dan done it. <laughs> he was like, I am not jumping off that bridge. And yeah. I was like, okay, for you, I understand that. <laughs> if all of your friends jumped off a bridge, would you? Well, yeah, you exactly. guys really did test that, didn't you? Yeah, Dan and Mike would not. <laughs> But um, but yeah, you know, I mean, you guys had an opportunity to to kind of do this and you know do all these you know go to these cool conferences, go to and do these kind of cool stunts and stuff like that. How how much of that stuff is, uh, you know, I mean, I do this show. It's relatively, largely, almost entirely unscripted, obviously, and uh, and and you know we we you know we go to different places and you know we'll t we'll do talks and we'll do some live shows from other you know uh, events and stuff like that. But we don't do anything to the caliber. You guys, how far in advance are you guys planning a lot of those? Uh, you know, I don't want to call them stunts, but those, you know, those, you know, vignettes and stuff like that. Well, I mean, it really depends. Some of the, some of the stuff, you know, like if we're doing a live show, we'll, we'll schedule that out pretty far in advance just because we need the logistics of, you know, getting a, a venue and getting right. the people to run the show and also, you know, that we, we see those as great opportunities to bring in sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we try to plan those out far in, far in, pretty far in advance. And some of the other stuff like we do with TRS, especially the sort of more stunty stuff, I mean, some of that stuff will come up on a week's notice, you know, it's like, what are you doing on Friday, you know, and you just go and do it, and that's part of the joy of it, is that, you know, I mean, my, I think one of my favorite things that came out of doing uh, Dignation, especially, was that I got to go fly uh, in F-15 with the Blue Angels, and that was like, you're kidding me, right, I mean, like, they literally <laughs> let me get into the back of an F-15, and we flew around, did all this crazy stuff, and then I was at the time getting my pilot's license, and the guy was just like, well, we've done everything. And I was like, well, that was awesome. And he was like, I mean, unless you want to fly it. And I was like, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so I actually did a couple barrel rolls myself in the back of an F-15, which was pretty mind-blowing. No, I, I can imagine it would be. I, I mean, now, obviously, with the, the bungee jumping, flying, stuff like that, not scared of heights or anything like that, right? No, not really. I'd be not freaking. Really. I, I would be. I would be pissing my pants. It. Uh, I. There. I mean. I almost blacked out the back of the F-15. I mean. It, that's. That's serious stuff happening. You know what I mean? You're going faster than. I mean. We broke the sound barrier. It was like. It was crazy. We buzzing the tower. Doing flybys. <laughs> Your uh, your body it was it your mouth's check uh, cash and checks your body can't get I I, exactly. I can't remember I can't something, remember, like, that. something <laughs> like that forget about it um, but uh, so let's let how, how do you get 
all of these different shows together. I mean, I remember when Dignation was just kind of like you guys, and it was like Prager with a camera at one point, and then <laughs> now it's like you guys have like a full setup, and then Totally Rad Show is also, I mean, it was just you guys on a green screen, and your it was at your garage at one point, right? Or yeah, was it? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it's still largely the same, but you guys have had, you know, way better art you know, over the years, and, and you guys have been able to kind of do that. How do you guys get the resources to continue to do stuff like that? I mean, is it is it through, you know, connections with and sponsors through like revision three or you know is it through uh, you know kind of people who just want to work with you in exchange for like products and stuff like that? because that's something that for our audience that is really I would think would be interesting is the ex- kind of the exchange of so we say good services and resources to get their yeah. stuff made you know what well, I mean it, it's it's tricky I mean there, there's sort of a lot of different way I mean one of the things that I love about the entertainment industry and and sort of what I've discovered that I really like about the entertainment industry is that there is no one way to make a show, to make a, a film, to find uh, uh, resources to, to make productions. And it always boggles my mind when I, when I hear people go, well, this is the way that you make a film, or this is the way that you make a, a web show. And you know, for, for me, part of the fun of, is that every single one of the shows that I've been involved in creating has had a different uh, business model for me. And, and I, I did that specifically because I don't, I, one, I don't think that there's only one business model. And, and two, I feel like if you start getting in that rut of this is how I make money doing this show, this is how the show gets funded is this way. Right. Then when you're, 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 you know, got these great opportunities for partnerships, but they don't fit inside that rigid business structure that you've created arbitrarily. Right. Uh, you know, you're, you're losing all of these different connective points, and, and really it's all about connecting with people and people that you vibe with and people that you're liking what they're doing and they're liking what you're doing. You just kind of have those me. I mean, I've had so many meetings in, 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 uh, in L.A. And, and other places where I literally walk in and we're like, I love what you're doing. You love what I'm doing. We should be doing something. Yep. And literally it'll be two and a half to three years later that we finally sign papers and do something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's just how it works. And, and we hang out and chat, and we're like, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. You know what I mean? It just takes so long. Um, and so for us, for, for Dignation, we were, we were fortunate because Revision 3 had, had, been, had started and had a little bit of money uh, from venture cap, uh, a venture cap round, or maybe even an angel round. It might have even been less than that. So there was a little bit of resource for us at the beginning, but also it was a very low-resource show. You know what I mean? Like, it was two guys on a couch with... I mean, beers and tape <laughs> were literally all we had to pay for. Uh, and so because it was so low resource, it didn't take much resources to get it, to get it going. And with TRS, it was sort of the same thing, but we knew what we wanted to do with that show. And so we were able to go and say, hey, we think the show is going to be about this kind of budget. We think it's going to be you know, about this type of time commitment. And, and low, all of this stuff, very, very, very low, because it was just the four of us at the time, you know. Um, and so we were able to get to get a partnership deal done, and then you know other shows. It's just been, you know, Control Chicken was one where we just said, hey, it's going to cost us this much to make it, and they went, okay, cool, go make it. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, which is rare, but but we had already done these other shows, and so it just becomes this thing where you're sort of building out this sort of business opportunities. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, knock on wood, I've been very lucky. You know what I mean? It's just I was in, we started. Dignation at a time when web video and podcasting was really taking off. Mm-hmm. We were one of the only video programs that you could get for free when you when the iPod video hit. So it was either pay money to download a video or you could download one of like six or seven podcasts, us included. It was like us, Tiki Bar TV. I don't even think, I don't think Leo was doing video at that point. No, so it was he, like us, Tiki Bar TV, Ask a Ninja. Yep. You know, and, and a couple of French Maze TV I think was out yep. at that time. So it... it you know, they're really so. It was just it was it was really sort of that moment where we were doing something that there was a market for, and that we sort of rose rose up at, and we were very fortunate about that. You know, and and we were doing something genuine, and I think that's always been the thing. Whenever I talk about doing web stuff, is I'm always like, just talk about something you're truly genuinely passionate about, because that comes across. 
And I can kind of see that with your new short, Voltron The End, um, because I've, you know, I, I think that we're, we're both roughly same age ish because we all seem, it seems like every time I've watched Holy Rad Show, you guys are always talking and referencing stuff from my childhood, stuff I connected with very, yeah. very uh, closely with, you know, Voltron, Thundercats, Star Wars, you know, stuff yeah. like that, and um, a little D&D. And, and so, you know, when this Voltron the end, I, saw, I just, I caught, I caught it from a, I think it was a, either a Twitter or a Facebook, someone linked it up and said, uh, you know, live action Voltron short. I was just like, yes, please. Um, <laughs> you know, I couldn't click that link fast enough. And then I saw the director attached to it, Alex Albert. I'm like, is it that Alex? And, <laughs> and sure hell it was. And then I'm like, and then I'm watching the, the short and I'm like, I know that guy. Um, and, uh, and, and sure, yeah, and it was, it was Lassie from, from Psych. Uh, you know, <laughs> Tim Oldmanson. How did you get connected with, with Tim to, to get him to, to do that? I mean, was it just a right time, right place thing? You, you know, you're buddies with him from through other connections? or how Yeah, did, how did, it, yeah. it was one of those things that I, I had done a short before. I, I met him through, I'm, I'm good friends with a, with a guy named Ted Ramey, who's, who's a sci-fi guy from way back. And, um, and through Ted and his sort of circle, my, basically my fiance's ex-roommate is Ted's fiance. So we, the four of us kind of hung out together a bunch and I got to know him real well and, you know, we've always been talking about projects to do and, and just kind of looping around each other and, and um, we shot some stuff for fun and, and, and through him met a, a bunch of sort of these sci-fi guys and one of them was Tim and, um, you know, I had written this, this short and, and I had finished my first short, Neverland, which, which we never released, we'll probably release at some point, but... but was more of a sort of, you know, film festival type thing, a call, more calling card type thing. Mm -hmm. And um, had started writing this, this Voltron short because I was like, I want to do something else. I want to do something, stay in the sci-fi realm because I like sci-fi drama so much. And, and I was like, I, I, you know, I've been wanting there to be this, this Voltron movie and I've heard, heard rumblings of it over the years. And, and so I had kind of come up with this idea for the beginning of what I would do for a Voltron, Voltron feature. You know what I mean? Like the opening scene of the Voltron feature is Voltron's destroyed. Oh crap! What next? Right. Uh, so I start. So I was like, well, why don't I just write that opening scene? And so I wrote the opening scene and, and had it and knew that I was gonna wanted to do it. And I was kind of racking my brains for who do I know that fits the part of this, you know, captain and all this stuff. And then I kind of fell on to Tim. And first I thought, well, there's no way he's gonna want to do it. I mean, he's a series regular on Psych. Like he's got. He's got <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't want to come to my garage for a day and sit in makeup in a chair, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and then I, I just sent him an email and I said, hey, this is going to sound really random, but, I, you know, I sent him a link to Neverland so he could, so I could be like, look, I, I'm good-ish, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, it's not going to be horrible, uh, and, and here's the script. And he didn't even look at either, he just said, well, let's go get coffee. Uh, and, and I went and sat down with him and had, had coffee with him, and he was like, well, yeah. I mean, it was almost sort of like he assumed I thought he knew that, or he assumed that I knew that he would just do it. You know what I mean? Huh. And so about halfway through the coffee thing, he was just like, well, I just want to make sure it's it's cool with SAG and, and my union. And I was like, well, everything I've done has been through SAG because I want the, the best of the actors, and they're all in SAG. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm actually a SAG member myself, so I was like, well, why would I not do that? So then he was like, yeah, it's screw it, let's do it. And I called uh, my buddy Greg Aronowitz, who's done, um, who's an amazing production designer. He did my short Neverland. He also did Legend of Neil and, and The Guild. And I know him through Legend of Neil and The Guild. And he just did all the production design stuff for uh, the new Dragon Age uh, web series that Felicia's doing, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I called him and I said, hey, do you want to, do you like Voltron? And he was like, what, <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> And so I said, I'm just going to send you the script. Just take a read. And uh, That's a loaded he, question. Do you like yeah, Voltron? Do you uh. like Voltron? <laughs> I'm going to say two words. Red line, what do you think? And he was like, I'm making a model. <laughs> no, so I, I did. I sent him the script. It, originally, the end shot was going to be all CG. Mm -hmm. And because uh, he asked me when I, because I said, originally I just said, I need you to build me a spaceship in my garage. And he went, Okay. And then he said, let me read the script, read the script, and he goes, well, what were you going to do, at the, what are you going to do at the end with the lion? And I said, well, I'd probably just find somebody who's a CG whiz, you know, whatever, and who can just make me a shot. And he goes, would you mind if I built you a model? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> like, 
how could I possibly mind you building me a Voltron model? And I swear to God, I had no idea what he was building. I thought he was going to build me, like, you know, a Vol- like a Voltron toy, you know, right. I mean, that looked cool. He came over, he was like, all right, it's done. And so he came over in his Jeep, and he pulls this thing out that's the size of a Doberman. I mean, it's literally, like, four feet long. And it was this meticulously created, destroyed red lion. I mean, half of it, like, you didn't, we didn't even, we didn't, have we didn't even show the majority of the awesome i mean there's like leg half off and it was on this big pot i mean it was just like it was gorgeous best thing i ever saw and and so we shot it on, on green and, and made this great pass and, and mikey the guy who actually the guy who edits trs um did the editing and, and the special effects the visual effects and he put in all this like perfect amounts of like steam coming out i mean it was just perfect and um and then we were like, well, shit, we, we got everything. Let's just go shoot it. You know what I mean? Like, let's yep. do this. Uh, and I, I've been, I mean, the guy who did sound was the, one of the guys who did sound design on Uncharted 3. So it's like, you just, it was Al- a great team that just came together. Alex and, Albrecht and, with Friends in High Places. Um, dude, and I met, the crazy thing is I met a lot of these people back when, you know, I mean, like, I, I, I met them when, like, the guy, uh, Rob, who did, uh, Rob Crackle, the guy who did all the sound, which is amazing, by the way, and that's why this short film seems so professional, to be honest. I mean, I, I, I think it's shot beautifully, it's, it, you know, it's fun, it was fun to do, but honestly, I think the audio is what makes that professional. Well, let's... Because he knocked it out. I, I'm going to say, you know, we're, we've been teasing everyone with how awesome this is, and I think what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and show the audience the awesomeness that is Voltron The End. And when we come back, we'll get a little bit more with uh, with uh, Alex Albrecht here, and we'll talk a little bit more about what he has coming up after the, after Voltron and, and what his future plans are, and then uh, and then we got more show. So uh, stick around. We'll be right back with more, uh, with, with more Film Summary Live after we show uh, Voltron The End by our guest tonight, Alex Albrecht. Warning. Warning. Cool for your life systems admin. Warning. Warning. Critical for your life support systems admin. Warning. Alright, I get it. Warning. Warning. Critical critical for your life support systems admin. Hello, sir. Damage report. There are 63 damage systems. Five critical, one life threatening. Would you like me to list them? Damn it! Would you like me to lose the system? No, that's so... Oh! Crap. You have suffered a number of rib injuries in the accident. You have been a cracked rib in the rib and suffered a head injury resulting in loss of consciousness. Accident. Where's the rest of the team? There is no contact with the other members of the team. What do you mean there's no... There's no contact? You can't raise anyone else on the comm? Anyone? I'm sorry, sir, but no other units are reachable. I assume they were destroyed in the accident. They're all gone. We have to contact the Galaxy Alliance. Can you get a message through? Sir, I don't mean to alarm you, but we have an issue with our life support systems. What? They are failing. There is only 10 minutes of atmosphere left in the ship's reserve tank. So this is how the mighty fall. Not with a roar, but with one small last breath. In order to send a message to the Galaxy Alliance, we'll have to use all remaining power to boost the outgoing message signal. We will deplete all energy reserves. Start recording. This is Sergeant Lance Rainier, Commander of the Red Line, second in command of the Voltron Force. The unimaginable has happened. Voltron has failed. King Sarkon has won. Do your best to prepare for whatever horrors lie ahead. I can only hope that someday, somehow, Voltron will rise again to become the defender this great universe deserves. To our day, Godspeed. Good luck. Red Lion, out.
Bye, sir. Dude. Yeah, that, that's, that, 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 uh, that short gets me every time, man. It really does. Yeah, right? Um, <laughs> So what what's uh, what's next for this for this flick? Are you gonna are you gonna try to do more? Are you gonna actually maybe try to take this, uh, you know, somewhere where you can maybe uh, get it done or fe- even a festival thing? Uh, what's your uh, it's what's your funny. deal? I actually just went to a, f- a short festival uh, last night. Um, I don't know if you know the, the short festival that um, NBC Universal does the diversity short festival that they do every year. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I just got a press release about that actually. Yeah, it was super cool. I, I and I, I went just to support a buddy of mine and uh, found out that another friend of mine was in one of the other five films. I mean it was sort of a random night and uh, and I was sitting there watching and I was like, wow, maybe I should like put some, submit Voltron to some short film festivals or something. You know what I mean? Like I had no never really thought of it that way. But we're doing um we're doing some cool stuff. I mean, you know you know, we, we were talking before we started about the end of Dignation and, and us, you know, Kevin and I kind of, you know, calling it calling it a, a, a night and hanging up the beer cups, as I say, <laughs> um, after, you know, six and a half years of doing a show every week. Um, and one of the reasons why we did that was because, you know, I, as much as I love doing Dignation, you know, for me, the, the joy, the reason why I came out to Hollywood was not to be a talk show host, you know what I mean? Like, I came out to Hollywood because I wanted to make cool stuff. And, right. and, and what, at the time that we made Dignation, that was the cool thing that, that was, we were doing. And, you know, now we've gotten into, I've, I've reinvigorated my love for scripted work. And, and um, you know, I have, a, I have a, um, a scripted sci-fi comedy that we're setting up uh, at an online company. Um, hopefully the next couple of weeks I'll have more announcements for that. We've been dealing with that for a while. Um, which will be, which I'm really, really excited about uh, to shoot soon. And then, um, you know, we, I've been really surprised, but we've been able to, because of the response that, that all the fans have had with, with Voltron, we've actually been in touch with um, the companies that own the rights to Voltron, and they, they, we've been sort of talking about how we can do more with, with the property. And know? I was going to, I was gonna actually going to ask you about that. Did you have to get permission to do the short because of the, you know, to use the Voltron name or even a likeness of say the lion, or even though you didn't show tons, you know, the full, the full Monty as it were, yeah. uh, you know, did you, you know, how did that work? You know, we, di- we, uh, we, we kind of went under the assumption of, you know, people, it's going to be good if people respond to it and, you know, the people who own the rights to Voltron, I'm, I'm sure they're not going to feel offended, you know, it's not like we were selling DVDs or anything like that. You're not the um, offender, it's not Voltron the offender of the universe, right? Right, exactly. Totally. It, it's not the offender of the universe, exactly. Uh, and and to, to be honest, we, 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 I wanted it specifically to, you know, show that I, that there is a, there is a desire for people who are fans of this show when they were kids to see a serious adult Voltron drama, whether it's a feature, whether it's a, a television series, whether it's a web series, or just a short, you know, that there was a there was an appetite out there for a sort of, you know, non-ironic, nostalgic look back at these '80s cartoons. You know, uh, I had a meeting today and I was talking to somebody about it, and I said, you know. The way that I see this Voltron short is the way that seven-year-old Alex saw Voltron the cartoon. That's what I thought I was seeing when I was seven. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, I, when I watch Voltron now, I mean, watching it now, it's like, oh, man, I, I was really young when I fell in love with this property. I mean, go back. They're on Hulu, and I watched them all just to kind of get, you know, my juices flowing to, to write the short. And I was like, wow, this, this, is, this is some interesting stuff. But the point is... What what I ended up making was what my mind's eye when I was seven saw, and and so I think the way to do Voltron right now for the fans of Voltron that were kids then is to do it like this, is to be serious about it. And you know, I mean, one of the things that would be exciting to me would be able to have to bring the action element to it. You know, we were constrained obviously by budgets, sure, because it was none, <laughs> <laughs> and and my lack of you know 3D modeling ability. Um, no, it's it's but, true. Like kind of, in, it's still independent filmmaking, and it's all about the passion that you have for what you're doing and the subject matter, and you know whether you're making a, a short film that is something of your own creation or you're you're borrowing off of another property that you know because it was something that 
you were really nostalgic for as a you know when you were a kid and all that. I mean, uh, and you watched as a kid. You uh, it, it's it's all it's all you know passion and and yeah. it, you know not constrained by budget, not constrained by resources. It's just you you love it and you'll find a way to get it done. Um, yeah. Now I guess the question is, I mean, do you have do you have a, a, a hankering to do more directing, or do you want to do more? I mean, obviously, most people know you be, at best being in front of the camera. Do you yeah. want to? Do you want to? I mean, where do you want to be? Where do you? I hate to ask that kind of pat question of like, where do you see yourself yeah. in five years? But I mean, mm. you know, is it, it? You know, do you see yourself saying, "Man, I really I love creating versus you love being"? You know, I think it, for me, it's always going to be I, I love everything. You know, and I and I think the the sort of you know go, overall goal at this point would be to be in a position where I could start projects that I felt passionately about and either connect the right people and the right talent in those projects and set them afloat, mm -hmm. um, or you know be the be the right talent for being behind the camera and either you know co-creating a property, co-writing a property, directing a property. Um, you know, and then there will be projects that come through that I, I go, yeah, the, the, char the person who's right to be this one character is me. Um, so do that aspect. And I think, you know, for me, that's, that's the global goal. I mean, I think that's the goal of anybody who, who wants to be a filmmaker is to be able to have a lot of different projects going at a time, be able to pick and choose my role in those projects. And sometimes that means not having a role. Mm -hmm. uh, or you know the role being the facilitator, the true executive producer of something, where you're really packaging talent together and facilitating their creative process, um, or it's being the creator and the, the creative process uh, or force behind it, whether that's in front of the camera or behind the camera. I mean that's that's the global goal, and of course any of those things being film, television, web, commercials. I mean what, whatever. At the at the end of the day, you know I don't I don't have a, a singular mind to say I want to make movies and only movies mm -hmm. you know for me it's you know there are stories that can only be told over seven episodes or seven seasons right you know what I mean and, and they're valid stories that I find very interesting and so you know there's there are stories that are small you know stories and, and big stories that can be told in two and a half hours and two hours you know whatever um, so for me I, you know it's one of those things where the the pat question has a pat response of anything <laughs> <laughs> i would like to be doing anything nice no and and yeah. uh you know i want to i want to just kind of um you know as we kind of taper off to the end of of uh of of your time on the show i want to you know tell the audience here that the uh, same thing i i told you while we were off uh before the show alex that you know i got my start as a network engineer and you know i got my start watching you guys on the screensavers and then um on dignation <clears throat> stayed very you know uh close to the tech side of a lot of things and then um, I got laid off and then I, did, I looked at what you were doing I looked at what Ke you know Kevin and you know what you guys were doing Dignation and Totally Rad Show and, and people like um, Callie Lewis from Geek Beat, uh, Geek Beat TV and at yeah. the time Geek Brief TV um, and, and all those kind of people and uh, it was just very inspiring I saw you guys working with your friends and you all seemed to be having a good time and you know I said you know I, I looked at you guys and I'm like I, I love movies and I have <clears throat> a passion for helping people and I said I want to do that for a living and yeah. uh, I looked at you guys and you guys made it look like it was possible and um, <clears throat> and uh, I want to um, I love the fact that you guys you know you, you're having a good time and you're continuing to work and work uh, I love that Kevin has been so successful in what he's done and you've been you know on every major web series pretty much on the web <laughs> uh, at one point or another which means you know someone likes you um, <laughs> and uh, it's it's just great to see you now stepping out into something else and and uh, yeah. you know and, and and doing something that is still you're passionate about and um, good to see that just everything is is kind of just coming around for everybody and uh, I want to thank you for coming on the show and I want to thank you for taking the time out because obviously you are busy as you've been saying you've got all these things going on um, I want to remind everyone in the audience that if you haven't followed Alex on Twitter Yet, please do uh, twitter.com slash Alex Albrecht, and uh, you can also follow uh, the star of Voltron the End, Tim Oldmanson, over uh, yeah. he's on Twitter as well, twitter.com slash uh, I think it's just uh, slash Oldmanson, right? Yeah, 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 at, at Almondson, yeah. Yep. Um, and you can check out uh, all the different shows that uh, that Alex is on. I mean, there's many of them. Um, Project Lore, yeah, Project Lore isn't, isn't going anymore. We, we got to that point where we were all kind of falling out of love with wow and uh, so it became yeah. this thing of like we were going and we were doing it and it was always fun when we got together but we got to this thing where it was like you know we, we were having a hard time kind of 
you know. I'll tell you what. Here's what happens. Well, we go Star Wars Old Republic. Yes. And then we'll get into that. And I will totally guild up with you on that one. Oh, dude, um, I'm, I'm, so that's going to have my babies. Uh, I've already, I've got my pre-order in. I'm ready to go. And uh, as long as they don't nerf it like they do Star Wars, uh, Star Wars Galaxies, I will be all set. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> um, I was a well, huge Star Wars Galaxy nerd back in the day. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Well, me, you and me both. I did a show called Swack, which was all about Star Wars Galaxies. Yes. So. I, oh, wow. That, I forgot that one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Swack from way back in the day. Well, thanks, guys, so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. And, and uh, yeah, for, for more uh, of, of Alex, you can also go to www.alexalbrecht.com, which I think redirects to your, your Google Plus feed. I think, which i got to change because yeah. I, I was, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're like, it's quiet here. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> where is everyone? Three cricks to a, a wave file of crickets. There you go. <laughs> but uh, thanks, man, and uh, I, I really hope that uh, I, I hope that everything uh, continues to go well for you, and uh, we hope to see more uh, for Voltron and more scripts, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be awesome, and um, you know, uh, hopefully we keep in touch because I, I love to just continue following what you're doing. Totally. Thanks so much for having me, guys. I thanks, really appreciate Alex. it. Thanks, Alex. Have a good night. All right. Talk to you later. Later. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that was Alex Albrecht, uh, uh, director of the short film Voltron The End and co-host of every pretty much uh, TV, uh, web TV show that you could possibly imagine. Um, <laughs> he's a cool dude, cool dude. I, it's been a long time coming that I've wanted to have uh, Alex on the show just because he's got a great personality, great dude. Um, anyway, so, so that said, let's go back into the rest of the show. We're going to take a quick break before we go to our Indiegogo project of the week. Um, and uh, we're going to go and do a little thing here that we like to do with our good friends at Indie Picks Unlimited. Uh, we will be right back once we come back from that. And we're back. That was uh, our little uh, plug for our good friends at Indie Picks Unlimited. You can go check out. they got a free one-month trial going on right now. Go try them out. They are the Netflix for independent film, and uh, except a Netflix that hasn't fucked up yet. So um, go check them out. They're really cool. Uh, another thing I want to totally uh, plug right now, I know you guys are probably looking at what I have on the screen here, and you're going, wait a minute. Um, haven't you guys already done Veil as your Indiegogo project of the week already? We did, actually, a long time ago. We, we mentioned it. Um, it's from our friends uh, at Tencent Sunday's Productions, uh, my friends Paul Bassetti, Ian Obetsky. One of the reasons why I wanted to actually put it back on the show again is because they just cut together a new trailer for their uh, for their their campaign. They've got a little a few days left, and they're really kind of doing one more big push. I want to make sure that we get what they're doing out to uh, to our audience uh, because I've seen what these guys can do with horror, and they are really talented people. And uh, it's just great to see. Um, I, I just I love seeing these guys make movies. At the end of the day, I just love seeing these guys make movies. So I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to give Vale another quick push. Uh, next week we'll have a, another new uh, Indiegogo project of the week. And that said, again, I do want to thank everyone right here above me, as this, the uh, the names are scrolling by, who are our film snobbery saviors. Uh, you know, all these different people uh, that have uh, supported our Indiegogo campaign. Uh, we had a two-week campaign. We wanted to raise two thousand dollars. We went over that because of all of your help, and we couldn't be happier. Uh, so I want to go ahead and just quickly do a um, another quick uh, video here for our good friends over at uh, uh, Ten Sundays Productions for their Indiegogo campaign for Vale. We'll be right back, and uh, Tim and uh, <laughs> Tim, Jerry and I are going to have a, a quick talk, uh, and uh, hopefully I'm getting demoted. My name is getting changed. What's going on, Nick? Jerry, uh, I, I hate to tell you, you're you're on your way out. Uh, it, honestly, I think the Golden Corral did me in. But we'll, uh, we'll talk more about that when we'll be right back.
Boom. Give them money. That's all I got to say. Good friends at Vail. Boom. Give them money. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to go, let, let's go ahead and let's chat with our, our good uh, co-host over here, Jerry Cavallaro. Let's talk a little bit about, we just got back from a, a very long trip. Um, very long. Very, very, very long. And now it just sounds dirty. By long, we mean it took 33 hours to get there and then 30 hours to get home in the car. And then, well, get back to your house and then yeah, I well, had to drive then, another four or five hours. Four hours. Yeah. Um, back to my place. So, uh... Yeah, man, we uh, we literally have now just completed the Film Snobbery uh, East Coast Tour. Um, we started here in Massachusetts, and then we went up to Maine, then we went down to the First Glance Film Festival down in Philadelphia, then I went back up to New York to pick up Mr. Cavallaro, and then we well, drove... I was coming off of New York Comic Con. That is true, and then we went down to the Orlando Film Festival for a week, and uh, then we drove back, and now uh, we're back here. Um, well, I'm back here at the, uh, the Film Snobbery studio, and Jerry's back at his... Uh, neck of the woods there back at the masturbation station he calls his bedroom and um he hey hey <laughs> uh yeah man and then so uh we we uh I, then i gotta fly out of here again in like a week and a half two weeks i gotta go to napa valley for another festival so uh it never stops and this is one of the reasons why we did the indiegogo campaign um i actually my laptop pretty much shit the bed i i've got it works just barely um it only works for about five or ten minutes at a time if I don't touch it, uh, and so uh, that I, I need to get a new uh, computer of some sort. We're actually looking into getting a tablet because uh, we wanted to be able to take it with us to interviews, and we could do some more stuff on the road with it, and uh, also use it as a marketing tool for you know doing um, you know filmmaking apps and and uh, you know doing sign you know uh, getting people to sign up for our newsletter with it. It's just easier than opening up and you know flipping open a laptop and all that kind of stuff. And you know we work fairly exclusively in the cloud anyway so it's really would be real easy for us to integrate into what we already do uh, plus also it keeps the costs low because tablets aren't horrifically expensive so um, since you're keeping the cost low and since we exceeded our indiegogo campaign no you're not getting any I money get there, can i get any of the money no my no, equipment no because you have not spent any of the money from your previous indiegogo campaign you've been holding on to it like a, a for the project at hand. Yeah, sure. We'll call it that. Um, yeah, and actually, speaking of projects, um, J Jerry uh, actually documented, for the most part, the entire ride down, the entire ride back up, and while well, every almost every day at the festival, um, he kind of filmed me, I don't know why, uh, talking about what Through we were the doing. the subject. How many times do I have I to talk to I am the shittiest subject you possibly could have come up with. That's what made you such a fascinating subject, because you're such a terrible subject that you kept belittling yourself on camera and then when you got really upset when the website crashed halfway through oh. the festival, that's when it got really interesting when you were like get the fucking camera away from me <laughs> yeah i was not pleased we had a database corruption last week uh sometime i don't know when uh that killed our website and um i ended up uh spending almost an entire evening up in the uh, offices of the Orlando Film Festival on someone else's Mac trying to get some things squared away, getting it all done. I got it like 90% there while I was up there to the point where you could at least get to the home page at least in, and you know everything else was pretty much still down but you could get, actually get to the home page and then uh, when I came home first thing I did was I got everything back up. I had to rewrite a few files and, and redirect a few things but everything is up and running now um, and we're going to uh, continue uh, adding because if you guys have noticed we've actually revamped the entire website over the past month or so. Um, probably not the best thing to do right before I left to go do some stuff, but uh, you know, when else am I going to do it? I'm always busy. So if I didn't do it then, I would have had to do it some other time. So uh, yeah, so we've got the, what was that? I said, or just not do it. Yeah, see, I'm not like you. When I say I'm going to make a project, I actually finish it. Oh, that's cold. That was kind of, wasn't it? <laughs> but but the cool thing is, is that between Jerry and I, we've got hours and hours of footage from uh, all the different sorts of festivals and conventions, as well as just things that have happened. Um, I got attacked pretty much uh, verbally by these two filmmakers. Uh, we won't mention who they were filmmakers from. Filmmakers are pretentious douchebags. Dude, the most pretentious fucking douchebags I've ever met. Mm, and the funny thing, and yeah. the worst thing, they were the ones that pointed out the website was down. Yeah, oh, and that's... Still to injury. Yeah, well, because I was talking to one of them, and while one of them was grilling me, the other one was looking me up on his iPad. Um, 
and I filmed it. And he filmed it. Now, the good thing was that I actually got to have a very intelligent conversation about film and filmmaking. The problem was is that no matter how intelligent that conversation was, I was talking to... You were to, always wrong. I was always wrong, and I was talking to fools. So I really was wasting my breath, and uh, that kind of sucked. But... Um, they, were, they weren't fools. They were smart. They were just arrogant and pretentious. <sighs> I, I'm going to go with fools. I really am. Because I really don't think that they... I think that they're deluded. I think they were delusional about okay. about yeah. their role as independent filmmakers or as filmmakers. Let's not talk about the assholes of the festival. Let's talk about the... I want to talk about the, the, the awesome people of the festival. I want to talk about uh, Sean Fallon and his wife Charlotte, the directors of Virgin Alexander, because they were awesome. I want to talk about... They were. Uh, I, I love them. I... They, they are, I wish... They, apparently, they're from New York. I wish they still lived in New York. So I can hang out with them. Oh, totally. They're really cool. People. Totally, and totally. I actually was talking with uh, Sean today on Facebook because he saw that I was friends with the Illinois International Film Festival, mm -hmm. and that's where Virgin Alexander is headed next. Mm -hmm. If you're going to that festival, check out the film. Great film. Oh, totally uh, good film with uh, starring Bronson, Bronson Pinchot and pa uh, Paige Howard. Never seen him in before. No, he's not Balky or Serge. And, uh, yeah, so they were asking about the festival. They were like, we saw your friends with the festival on Facebook. We're heading there next. Can you give us any advice? I was like, the only reason I'm friends is I friended them because I thought it would help me get in. <laughs> and they didn't. Um, <laughs> they're, they're really cool people, and they made a great film. Totally. And I think it will be pretty successful. So you'll see all see it very soon. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, Jerry and I, we, we've got probably a couple of days worth of uh, footage to import, and um, so we're going to work on that. Uh, we've got a bunch of interviews from the First Glance Film Festival to get out first. Uh, i got one interview, I think at least, from the uh, Portland Maine Film Festival, and I've got uh, a dozen or so or more from Orlando, including um, we, both Jerry and I actually had the pleasure of finally being on a panel together uh, which was kind of fun. Um, it was a producing panel, and uh, why... I filmed from on the panel, I filmed Nick. Yeah, every time I was talking, he was filming me, which was really kind of uh, awkward for me. But the cool part is, funny. you know, it is kind of funny. And then, actually, it was kind of cool. Like, there were some other people talking, and you, myself, and the lady from uh, Yellow Rick Road, uh, uh, Fair of the Heart is the name of the movie, it was about Rick's, a documentary about Rick's, Rick Springfield, um, she had this sign, and I was just like, "Give me your sign, and so I can hold it for the, for the for the duration." And she got pictures of me holding the sign, so we're all taking pictures of each other while all these other people are talking at the end, and it was just kind of funny, a little rude but funny. Um, they they were talking for a while. They so. really do. They, got they, they like to talk, but in all fairness, they're very intelligent people. Uh, Dan Springen, Ralph Clemente, they were they were the ones that were leading most of the panel. Yeah. So while they were talking and spouting really good advice, we were busy goofing off with the old Rick Road sign. Yeah, pretty much. That's kind of what we do. We kind of goof off. Uh, you know, panels are tough because after you've done like ten of them, um, you realize that it, it, you know you realize that they're totally not for you. Like because you've heard all the information before. Usually it's you saying it. Um, and I've been on panels with a couple of these people before, so it was kind of like. Oh, I remember this. It's like Groundhog Day. Um, and so you get kind of bored really easy, and you want to, like, fit, you know, I don't want to say feign interest. You want to be interested, but it's tough because, you know, when you talk about film all day and you talk with other people about film all day, especially the people that are now talking, you've already heard what they have to say about it, and whether There's you agree or not. Agree. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, and, uh, and nodding, and it's like, that's, this question's for everyone. And then by the third person, they're like, does anyone have anything new to add to this? Yeah, to, like, pretty much. Uh, no. Yeah. I think that's why we need more debates, where you have someone that's like on one subject and someone that you know believes the complete opposite, and then you put them on a panel together. Then that's more interesting. Boxing ring style. Yeah, um, that's, isn't that what they do South by Southwest or uh, not? Fantastic Fest? I something? have no idea, man. I know. I know there's, they, they, have a, they even get a boxing ring. I'm pretty sure. I forgot which festival it was where they get. I think they get like film critics and stuff. And it's with Tim League, uh, I think, does it at the, from the Alamo Draft House. So it has to be like Fantastic Fest or South by Southwest or one of those. And that's what they do. They do like they they do like boxing match uh, debates. <laughs> Well, we've uh, the good news is that we made it back safe and we had a good uh, we had a good run. Um, I only wanted to kill Jerry most of the time, not all of the time, so that was good. 
And uh, it ended with him wanting to kill me really a lot. Like, he Jerry. It just built up. Jerry is is ver like traveling with Jerry is like traveling with an indecisive girlfriend. He doesn't like that I like to yelp and look ahead and find out the menus of places before we stop. Well, it's not only that, but he'll do that thing where it's just like, um, uh, we're hungry. Okay, fine. Well, what do you want to eat? And he'll be like, I don't know. What do you want to eat? I'm like, I, I don't give a shit. Just fucking pick a place. And he won't. <laughs> you know, he'll sit there on Yelp, and he'll be like, oh, I want to go to this place. And I'm like, that place we just passed three exits ago? Um, you know, you're a fast driver, and Yelp and Google Maps didn't account for going slightly past the speed limit. Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, was, I was always just like, okay, this place is 10 minutes ahead. So I was like, let me check it out. I'm like, okay, let's go here. And you're like, yeah, we passed that two minutes ago. I'm like, it's only been five minutes. <laughs> How is that possible? Well, you know, Jerry, Jerry would probably have saved himself way more time had he just put the phone down and looked at the signs that lead up to the exits to have all the pictures of what the fuck is at the exit. Um, and I know, I, I totally, I totally get Jerry's point of like, I don't want to eat at places that I can eat at every day in New York. But yeah. the fact of the matter is, though, is when you're traveling, you just, you eat whenever you can. And, and I, you know, I, th I think we did a, I think we did a good, I think we did a good job at, you know, when we were in Orlando getting, like, you know, we had Hardee's, we had Steak and Shake, we had, you know, IHOP at one point, which you can get up here, but we had Gino's Pizza, holy shit, is the best pizza ever. Um, I'm a New Yorker, and I go to Orlando for the fucking pizza. Totally. <laughs> Their pizza is amazing, and like we we went there at least four or five times while we were down there. I, I probably sh I could count my frequent. I have a frequent buyer card from them. <laughs> I can count on there how many times we actually went there. But yeah, it's that's good pizza. Yeah. So um, you know we so it, it was. It wasn't that, you know, I think that we didn't have enough places to choose from. I think there was an overabundance. And Jerry has a very hard time making decisions. Um, and he's a... He's well, a that's not true. I you, wanted to go to Urban Flats, and you're like, I don't eat anything there. And I was like, well, we can go here. And we were like, that's kind of expensive. That was both of us saying, yeah, no, that's expensive. Let's not go there. Well, you know... What, uh, you convinced me, let's go to Panda Express. Oh, let's talk about Panda Express yeah. for two seconds. Like, we hate to gross out our audience, but let's talk about Panda Express. So we went to... We decided we were going to go to Panda Express, and... Before. He never been. So I have like the one. I live by the one mall that doesn't have a panda express. Exactly. So he, we meet the criteria of Jerry has not does not have access to this food at his house. So we decided, okay, we're gonna go to Panda Express. I love Panda Express because I eat it at the mall that I go to all the time. So uh, I decided, yeah, I got some orange chicken, I got some rice, I got some you know fortune cookies. I'm all good. Jerry got something completely different. He got like an egg roll and some other shit. Yeah, and, yeah like a chicken egg roll and walnut shrimp, which was their new thing, and like. Chow mein. It was really good food. Oh, totally. <laughs> but here's the thing. We both took, like, basically one bite a piece of our food, and then I got up for a second. I was like, hey, I'll be right back. I just have to hit the bathroom. I went in the bathroom, destroyed that motherfucker. And then Jerry is texting me while I'm on the toilet, like, can you come back, please? Because now I have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom only has one stall. And, like, Nick sat down, and he was there, like, before, way before me because he knew exactly what he wanted. He got in there. He was like, this, this, and this. They get, like, a soup Nazi, you know. I was, like, banging my hand on the glass trying to figure out what to get. The guy's like, we offer free samples if you're not sure. So and I'm and when Jerry heard that, he was stuff. like, I'll have one of everything. Yeah, so I'm sampling some stuff to eat what I want. Nick goes and he eats, takes one bite out of his food. He's like, I got to go to the bathroom. So I'm watching the food tray while I'm still ordering. I get down. I put my tray down and stuff. I'm like, wow, he really didn't eat anything yet. I go and take one bite out of my food. I'm like, hmm, this is pretty good. Take a bite out of the chicken egg roll, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I need to go to the bathroom. So I just text Nick and Nick and I'm like, when are you gonna get out? He's like, oh, I'm gonna be a little while. I'm like, hurry the fuck up. And then I'm sitting there in the Panda Express, like shaking in my chair. Look, people are looking at me and I'm just like tweeting and texting him, like, come on, get out of the bathroom. Because it's a, a single stall bathroom. Yeah. Well, and I didn't want to leave the food. So then I see like Nick's head pop up behind like this a bunch of tables. He got me from the hat. I jump up and I'm like, okay, and I like kind of just like do the tag team thing. I'm like, okay, you watch the food, and I ran to the bathroom. It and was yeah, that was Panda Express, and then as soon as we got back to the hotel, we went again, and then we went to the the theater and we went again. And you were like, 
I think people are going to wonder why we keep going to the bathroom together like two chicks. <laughs> and and it, it, it did kind of become that. And I, I, it was probably because we were eating a lot of the same food at the same time, because very rarely yeah. did we not eat together. So it became like, I have to go to the bathroom, me too, and we just go to the bathroom together. And it's, it, it's you know, a little gay, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to continue on what happened after we got to the bathrooms at the theater? Are we going to go? Oh, uh, we, we, oh, well, no, we don't have to get into that. But okay. needless to say, we were texting about other people in the bathroom, and they caught on, and we... And they started commenting. They started commenting on it, and it was funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, although uh, I got to have... Uh, we, the only time I went to McDonald's while we were in Orlando was for the McRib, because the McRib is a regional thing that we do not have in New York. Yeah, so, so we, we got yeah, the McRib. But, Everything else, we, I've tried to do as much Gino's pizza as possible since, yep. like you said, best pizza down there. But let's not talk about food anymore. Let's go on to the movie. No, because I'm hungry now. Um, <laughs> I know, I'm starting to get hungry. Too. I want to talk, the, uh, I wanna talk about I want to talk about the Mole Man of Belmont Street. Oh, my God. Dude. That was awesome. That's the next Shaun of the Dead. That, totally. You know, we, we got a chance to talk with John, the filmmaker, and we were uh, such a charismatic and nice guy. He is, I mentioned him while we were interviewing him, or just after we interviewed him, I said, you know, it's such a, a relief to run into people like him, and also to, to, by extension, Sean and Charlotte, and even Alex on the show tonight, like people who just have like char charisma and are passionate about what they're doing and energy about them, it makes you want to go and do something, you know? And he was just full of that. And he was a ton, he, goofy guy, loved, he, loves a good joke, easy to laugh with, total dude. Um, and uh, runs a haunted house out, out a really nice haunted house out in uh, Illinois, oddly enough. And, uh, and, and yeah, his movie was just so funny, so well put together, so well done. And uh, I, I don't even know what else to say. It was just... What we were saying, we were like, they need, like overall, it's hysterically funny. Like, I, my opinion was that they could probably trim a few minutes from it. To keep it up, like as fast the pacing. as possible. The pacing, yeah, I agree. Just like, keep, like I mean, there are parts where it's like not slow, but it's just like the, there's not that many jokes. It's like a little spread out in some parts, and it's like it works better when there's the rapid fire, like joke after joke after joke. Right. And if they trim down a little bit and keep it that rapid fire, it really, I think it has the potential of being the next one of the dead. And like I've seen, I've read reviews. I was looking, Variety loved it. Yeah. Like, oh, and, and, and his co-star, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, but I'll make sure that I, we mention him. Is it Mike something? Uh, well, you have the ability to actually look it up right now while we're talking. I don't. Yeah, I do, but um, But easy. that said, he, he, you know, his, some of the best throwaway lines, like just under his breath throwaway lines in the entire film, that just cracked me up. Uh, like one scene where this guy just starts fucking this other guy's girlfriend. He's like, so you're just going to start fucking right there, huh? Okay. The, the um, best and is then, an hour later when it comes back to them and they're changed for this is like they changed position. And he's laughing at it. Yeah, he's like they changed positions. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike, Braddish. Brad, is it Braddish or Braddish? Braddish, yeah. maybe uh, something like that. Mike, it's always right. It's Mike. All right. Uh, and so Mike, also, good Robert job. Robert England, isn't it? We mentioned that Robert England's in the film. Yes. Um. Yeah, he's in it. Okay. There you I go. Throw that in there. But so is Sweet Chuck. It. Yes. Come on. Okay, I thought you were going to continue. No. Okay, well, Robert England has a really funny and somewhat surprising role. Like, I just didn't expect some of the things that he was saying to, for him to say that, you know, outside of Freddy Krueger makeup. Right, right, right. But, um, but no, overall, uh, Mole Man, good movie. Virgin Alexander, great movie. Um, we saw... I saw it ten years later. How... That was a fun movie. Yep. It was much darker than I thought it was going to be. But it was actually really good with uh, Rachel Boston. Mm -hmm. who, uh, she had two films at the festival. The other one was The Pill, which I wanted to see, but I, was, I wasn't able to make it. But, uh, yeah, Ten Years Later, was uh, that's definitely one of those films that I could see getting picked up very soon. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't been picked up yet. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. I, we didn't get to see that many films. Because, well, same because, thing as last year. We got kind of, you know, oh, we, we, you know, we did interviews. That was it. And then we did the panel, and then we, you know, we ended and up going to the after party and actually having a good yeah, time we this year. Did the after parties this year? Last year we skipped all the after parties because we just did interviews all day, and it was kind of a different dynamic this year because there weren't as many filmmakers in attendance. Yeah, and and, that, and, and, the, and, and the filmmakers that were in attendance, there were a lot of them that weren't as 
Um, enthusiastic about being, being interviewed or at their film. Yeah, it was really weird. It was one of those, you know, and even when we did finally get interviewed, so there were some of them were just like, all right, well, thanks, bye, and we'll just take off. You know, I mean, guys like John, guys like, you know, Sean and Charlotte, they were cool. Like, we hung out with you them. We hung out with them the whole festival. Yeah. And while they were there, we were hanging out with them. Like, we, we actually got upset that we didn't get to say goodbye to Sean and Charlotte. Oh, we were so, we were really bummed. Uh, and you know what? While we're at it, we, you know, we also hung out with a couple other people that we really should say hi to. I want to say thank you to for being hospitable to us. Um, uh, Anastasia and Angelique um, for, uh, you know, because I'm going to totally use this platform as a means to give shout out to girls, because uh, that's what I do. But, um, oh, well, no, they were they were cool, and they hung out with us pretty much at every after party and stuff like that, and, they, you know, it was just nice to see kind of friendly faces and stuff, uh, you know, us not being from the area. So it was, uh, was kind of cool of them to hang out with us and, uh, you know, dance and drink and <laughs> chill. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, the festival as a whole really good. I always like enjoy the the, uh, the Orlando Film Festival. Um, I had a good time at the First Glance Film Festival as well. I want to thank uh, Bill for having us out there again, and uh, I also want to thank him for his donation to our Indiegogo campaign, which uh, your name should be somewhere up here at some point. Um, very uh, happy to to see that. Um, anyone who did win a prize on the uh, previous <clears throat> First Glance Film Festival uh, Film Snobbery Live shows. Uh, if I if you don't get it shortly, let me know because we'll make sure we take care of that. And uh, the grand prize winner, um, I actually do have your software. He actually gave it to me. I thought he was going to mail it out to you. He actually gave it to me, so I will put it in the mail sometime in the next week. And we'll uh, you can get your Gorilla Pro software sometime soon. So that yeah, is uh, that's really about it, though. I mean, we we did a lot of traveling. We did a lot of driving. Uh, we hit about 15 WalMarts um, yeah. for you know. You know, you can say what you want about Walmart getting rid of all indie businesses and ruining mom and pop shops, but they're a sight for sore eyes when on the road. Oh, totally. Because you're allowed to sleep in their parking lot and they look the other way because they know that you're going to get up, you're going to use their restrooms, and then you're going to walk around and buy some shit. And that pretty much happened at every Walmart we stopped at. Yeah, I mean, I, it got to the point where even one day I was just like, oh, shit, I have to go to do, go to a laundromat and I have to get some yeah. clothes. Or I have to wash my clothes. And I'm like, or I could just go to Walmart and spend $20 on a completely new outfit. Yeah, and I mean, I'm actually wearing one of my new shirts now. I've got this nice Friday the 13th uh, Jason shirt on yeah. that I bought Which at I Walmart. Which I for you. You did. Don't say it like that, though, because that sounds really gay. Well, uh, yeah, we had, uh, it was funny. Like, Nick was like, I'm kind of out of clothes. So we were like Walmart run, Walmart run. Oh, totally. Like, like we looked at the laundry thing, and it was like seven dollars for a shirt and like ten dollars for pants, yeah. and you had to wait like twenty-four hours to yep. pick it up. And we had to go to the other hotel. We were like, it's gonna be cheaper to get an entire outfit at Walmart. Yeah. And then you went there and got like an eight pack, a pack of boxers, and like we were like, You're well, I wouldn't go that far. I got a four pack of boxers, okay. I got a package of socks, and I got a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, actually, yeah, and sorry, two t-shirts. And that was less money than what it would cost to do, like, laundry for one more day. Oh, totally. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, literally, that would have been for, like, an uh, outfit, too. You know, and because and, I wouldn't have had enough money to do the whole the whole shenanigan, you know, all of my trash bag. Um, yeah. But, you know, I had clothes and... A giant trash bag full of dirty clothes. Whatever, you know, it keeps it all in one place and keeps yeah. it away from my clean clothes. It works. Um... But uh, no, we we got some great photos um, that Jerry will be putting up I soon like and tagging. Great photos. Yeah, he does. Well, I won't say five hundred great photos. I'll say I have like five hundred photos and maybe like eight great ones. <laughs> but maybe <laughs> a, like a hundred good crazy. ones. Now, are are we gonna tell them the other thing, or That's you want to hold I'm on? Gonna, I'm gonna hint at it because I still don't know legally what I'm allowed to say. Right. But um, I'm gonna be going on another trip sometime next year uh, on behalf of uh, Animal Planet, and uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what more I could say about it. Yeah. It's going to be quite a hairy expedition. Really? <laughs> wow. That's funny for me and Nick only. I, that wasn't it's even funny. funny for me, and I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so hopefully, uh, you know, Jerry will have some more information about that sometime in the near future. And Once I fill out the paperwork and get it notarized and pick out the date of when I go, I think then I can, like, publicly announce it. Right. I should probably just ask them when I fill out, when I hand in the paperwork next week. Right. Like, I see this. Can I tell them about this? So, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be weird, and I'm going to document all of it. Hell, yeah. 
So, uh, but yeah, so that said, um, you know, we did a, we, we had a good time. Um, we've got more coming up in the future. I'll be in Napa Valley. So if you're a West Coaster in the San Francisco area um, or in the Napa Valley area, uh, I'll be up in your neck of the woods in the next couple of weeks. Then there's a slim possibility I might be back in Orlando not too long after that. Um, we're, uh, it, it, you know, it's funny. John Wolf just wrote in the chat room, or he, he wrote a while ago. I don't know when he wrote it. Uh, if you need a third wheel for the next East Coast tour, let me know. Laugh out loud. Yeah, you couldn't uh, fit in the car. Well, yeah, he, there's no way he'd fit in the car. We can strap him to the roof like Grandma. Totally. Like, like our aunt. See, and, and Edma. Yeah. And, and Edna, yeah. Ed, yeah. Thanks, um, there you go. Um, well, I was going to say, we kind of met like a John Hoff type in Orlando. We did, we Bill. did. Will. Yeah. Uh, from Geek New Wave. Something like that. Yeah. And yeah. Another uh, one of those guys who'd never been to a film festival before, and he just, you know, his editors uh, yeah, for the thing he, he was writing for. The site. He, he's doing interviews and stuff, and it just kind of reminded me of John Hoff uh, in a way. I'm not sure why, because I've never actually met John Hoff, but it, it, I kind of, it was kind of funny, and uh, it turned out he was a massive fan of mine. This was just my way of segmenting into that. We didn't talk about. How we met a massive fan of mine. Right. I, I love how your your move, Jerry, is to let's go ahead and, and try to start plugging up your, your celebrity in Orlando. Yes, because we didn't yet, and we kind of have to before we end the show. I don't think we have to do shit. I could end the show right now. We don't have to say I anything. I know you could, but I, I, could. I like to talk about, let's talk about me. Well, it's not your show, though. Oh, now you're going to play that card? I just totally oh. played that card. I'm the co-host, sir. <laughs> yeah, co which means I literally have nothing to do with it. No, not at all. Because uh, <laughs> I can see you're doing a bang-up job getting, uh, you know, getting the, the uh, chat room riled up there, pal. Well, maybe if we had people in it. Uh, that is true. We have been gone for a few weeks, though, so people might uh, not know that we're around right now. And then it sucks because we're going to be gone again for probably another week or two while I'm in uh, Napa or possibly back I in Orlando. I'm going to take a vacation until January. I would love to, but, you know, we have one of the... We have people that contributed. We do. Know? I, I think I might almost end up being booked almost like through half the next do. year. I just, brilliant idea. How many people did, How many people contributed under that? Like 20-something? Boom! Fucking 24-hour show. <laughs> we, we, cut, we bang them all out one day, 24 hours, every guest on Film Snobbery Live that contributed to the campaign. People have been dying for a 24-hour show. We give it to them. I would not be against that, but, you know, obviously we'd have to get those people who are, like, going to be up at four in the morning, <laughs> you know? Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But <laughs> but uh, that said, There's I want to... There is an idea. There is an idea. It, no, it, it's it's a better idea than I had, which was no idea, so I'm all about so that. talking about... Will, who is a big fan of mine. Uh, no, no. Actually, I was going to go ahead and I was going to actually end the show because it's kind of uh, that time of night. Hey. Um, needless to say, Jerry, as usual, is a rock star in Orlando. Uh, you know, the, the gentleman we're referring to uh, loved the movie, didn't realize he was actually talking to the director, and then he found out, and he was very excited, did an interview with Jerry, and that is posted now. Jerry, do you have a, a web link that you can put in the chat room for people to go read it? Yeah, I'm going to go find that. Okay, you go do that while I kind of close things out here. Uh, Jerry also ended out at the, uh, the night, um, giving away, uh, they gave away a bunch of uh, copies of Stuck Like Chuck to the volunteers, and he actually ended up even giving autographs to the volunteers Re by request. He wasn't like, I'm going to autograph that. People were like, can you autograph this? So uh, good for Jerry, real happy uh, for him, real happy for everyone. I'm uh, very excited to, uh, to to kind of be home and get some work done. Um, I've got so much stuff going on that it's just we're on the cusp of announcing that we can't do shit with yet. Uh, but when we do and when we can, you guys will be the first to know, and uh, I look forward to all the stuff that we're going to be bringing you guys shortly. I want to thank... Uh, once again, our, our awesome guest tonight, Alex Albrecht of Dig Nation, Totally Rad Show, and the director of Voltron The End. Um, hopefully, you know what, I think I might even screen that at my screening series because it was that epic. Uh, I want to thank everyone else for uh, joining us in the chat room. I did see, obviously, John Hoff, uh, Miles Maker. Uh, put it in now. I don't know who that is, but thank you for coming. And, uh, and, and, and whoever else is just lurking and not chatting with us, uh, thank you guys for stopping by as well. And we're going to go ahead and we'll see you guys next week on another episode of Film Sobri Live. And uh, have yourselves a great night. Bye, everyone.